How does it feel to know that I'm the reason you're still employed? I feel like you're implying that I owe you a bit of like indentured servitude, and I don't know how I feel about that. Although I've had my stints in that area before, and I'm pretty good at it. So if we have to delve in, but that's for another time, I think. <laughs> I thank you personally, but I do want to, you know, I want everybody to know how much I appreciate the love that you've uh, showed us at the show and me personally. Like I said earlier, you know, with the dream Emmy ballot. <laughs> Cast your votes. Um, but, you know, I mean, I just, I can't, I, I genuinely can't thank you enough. It's been, it's been huge. And we've had, you know, quite a, quite a few people within the media and critics um, be very kind with us. And your voice is, you know, at the top of the heap often and always. So I greatly, greatly appreciate all that. So let's talk about this Subway thing. How crazy is that? Yeah, Subway has come out uh, really, really big for us. They're basically our angel sponsor now. Um, and I think that it's going to be very interesting to see how the season plays out because it could be um, uh, really a, a model for the way I think television might be able to survive if you have one major sponsor. And that kind of, kind of harkens back to what television used to be anyway, you know, when soap operas were first popping up because they were, you know, Hawk and Soap. And it's like, well, you know, we're brought to you by Borax or Dove or I don't know, you know. And when you have an easily consumable product, uh, like a sandwich, and your dedicated, diehard viewing audience can go and patronize that advertiser easily, and, you know, and I can go buy, I'm going to eat, I have to eat a meal, it might as well be something healthy and tasty, like a Subway sandwich. And, uh, and it's five bucks, five dollar footlongs. <laughs> you can make things. I'm in bed with Subway. No, actually, you know what? Um, uh, well, I am. I mean, you know, clearly I only have a job because they're coming up big for us. Um, but even, again, for the show and me personally, just like you, you're like a Subway in my life. It's obvious that Sarah's going to be working at a Subway next season. Come well, on. yeah. I mean, yeah, probably. Although, you know, maybe they'll have, uh, I, I don't know, there, there's a couple ideas that are being kicked around. One of them is that the Orange Orange will become a Subway. I probably shouldn't be saying any of this stuff. Oh, I'm yeah, get no, you're doing just Wars, fine. Like, no, no, Josh gave me, gave you oh, permission did he give me, okay? via me. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, what everybody is expecting is going to happen. Obviously, we're not too precious about keeping the store one particular thing. It was the Wienerlicious, then it was the Orange Orange. Some people really miss the Wienerlicious. Um, I miss it in some ways, although it was uh, it was very Austro-Hungarian kind of you know beef and cheese, and uh, we've gone much more to the healthier pink berry kind of deal. By the way, I, I think it's perfect integration. Why it just just keep something a standing set that way you you don't have to constantly be worrying about how do we work it into dialogue. How do you you know just just let it be what it is. That's why I was so. Uh, astonished when Best Buy didn't jump on the opportunity to, to be our, our big box store. But at the same time, it worked out good for us. You know, we don't have a big corporate sponsor breathing down our neck, making sure that we're representing things in a particular way. You get to have a lot more fun when you have some fictitious um, brand like Buy More and the Nerd Herd and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There are multiple things that they're talking about. They just want to make the right choice, one where the fans will accept it the most, you know, and it'll bump the least with um, everyone wanting to just keep Chuck the way that it was. And the way that it is. Another big change next season, you know, obviously Chuck is now this badass super spy who can do kung fu and who knows what else. Um, what What is that going to do to sort of the everyman quality of Chuck? I mean, now he's like a superhero, essentially. Well, again, I don't know how much I'm allowed to, You're allowed to, say to, dis to disclose, but I will say that it does not, it actually doesn't change the everyman uh, scenario. It doesn't work perfectly. There are snags with this intersect. Uh, and so where one might think that, oh, Chuck knows Kung Fu, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he has experiences within certain physical abilities that may or may not last. I can neither confirm nor deny these allegations. Mm. So You're going to get big trouble for Huge. That. Huge trouble. <laughs> and what are the odds of uh, NBC ordering a back nine? That's the question I get a lot from uh, readers is that, you know, they've picked up 13. Right. Is there a chance that it could still go a full season, or is it your understanding that it's just going to be the 13? Honestly, I have no idea. Th I see two scenarios in which we could end up doing a full 22. One, we start shooting August 6th. So uh, 
we're going to find out, I think, near December 1st if we get a, a back nine. And that will happen if NBC sees an opening in their schedule. I mean, maybe it's on a Thursday night. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, Comedy Night Done Right will continue to be done right. Uh, or on Monday or whenever. I, I have no idea. So that's one option. And then the other is if NBC sees it fit to um, still start us mid-season, March 1st after the Olympics, but run us into the summertime and say, you know what, we think that the viewers will watch the show even if we go into June, July. So there's a couple scenarios in which it could happen. I don't know if any of them will happen. Um, but at the same time, I kind of feel like 13 episodes is a great... Is a, you know, I, I like the way the cable does it. I like that... I feel like sometimes with 22 episodes, you have a lot of those filler episodes. And for the diehard fans who are hoping for bits of mythology to continue to come out, then, then you'll get like this episode that really means nothing and just kind of there to bridge the gaps and people get frustrated with it and you know I just I just want to make the best product that we can make and if that means doing it in 13 great if it's in 22 great certainly for the writers it's always better knowing where their beginning and end is otherwise they have you know you're they're arcing the story and then they got to like kind of you know bounce it off if we're get, if we end up going another you know another nine episodes or whatever but there's a chance